back for two out of three ways you can do an ombre. And with this particular method, we're going to be doing what I guess you could kind of call a stippling to give that feathered slash smooth transition with your contrasted colors. So color-wise, we are going to use an Annie Salone Blue and we are also going to use, this is like a gray with green, kind of an olive, light olive with gray. Love these. These are like my two favorite colors. Those are always my go-to colors. I almost do them too much, but I love them. So I poured them out onto a plate. You can see there. We are going to use a medium oval brush. You can use any brush you want. Um, the only reason I recommend something like this is because A, it holds paint really well, lots of paint, um, so you don't have to keep stabbing back into your paint pour. So again, always working with chalk paints, it's water and paint ratio. Those are the two key components to manipulating the paint to getting the finishes that you want, water and paint ratio. So demonstrating on the same board that we used, I just went ahead and put a, uh, I went ahead and put a uh, coat of Paris Grey on here. So um, we just have a nice clean finish again. And I'm going to go ahead and paint um, into the ridges here. Again, this is a cabinet door. Um, it was never, it was never used. So I'm just using this as the demo board. So I'm going to start with my, we'll start with blue. And the fastest and easiest way to do this is put your paint colors where you want them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I'm putting the transition of the colors together. So I'm gonna put these basically staining off where I want my colors. Again, you may want to use two different brushes. I use the same brush, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to go ahead and put my Chateau Grey just above. It's going to have a bit of blue in it, but that's okay. So the trick with this style technique of doing an ombre is we're not really doing what you just saw. I'm just putting the paint down where I want to. So if you're working on your furniture piece, you're going to outline where it is um, without actually really matching your colors yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back and because I already have Chateau Grey highlighted on here, we're going to go back just a little bit of paint. And I'm going to just start, you're going to just, that's why I'm calling this like a stippling because you're giving high and low points to the paint and just kind of stabbing it. And what you're going to do is you're going to stab these colors together. And you're going to see 
there's going to be almost another color coming through, but it will give you a really nice smooth transition. So again, just like makeup, you're just pushing one tone into another and the more you keep stabbing it, the more it feathers into itself. And it looks amazing. And again, this does give a really nice texture. Um, it can be sanded um, if you want to smooth it down a little bit, especially for like a tabletop. Um, totally your prerogative. Um, and at the same time, it just looks so... So beautiful. This is my favorite go-to blending technique. So instead of doing the back and forth motions and blending up and down and just going back and forth over and over, adding and adding and adding, you can do this almost pretty much in one coat. So it's one of my favorite ways to blend paint and you can create beautiful ombre effects with this. So I'm going to add a little bit of my blue, a little bit of water, just a little bit. See that? You just keep stabbing it in together, just like a makeup. So the other key to doing this I don't do it hard, but as the transition gets smoother and smoother, the way I'm stippling my brush will get a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. So it's almost like you've applied a big chunk of makeup, so you're just going to blend, 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 and then as you go around and you want to smooth out the edges, you're just very lightly starting to um, just kind of feather it together, kind of like eyeshadow or a blush, and that's it. You just keep going. I've kind of done this kind of ring over. I'm just doing that more or less because I want it to be as visible on the camera as I can. But voila! The other really nice way is you can re- I feel like you have a lot more control how much paint from your darker color 
to your lighter color, bringing it up and down. So you're just taking a little tiny bit of blue and you're bringing it up to meet with the gray green. And if you want to bring it up even more or vice versa, you want to bring the green down a little bit. So again, the, the control is amazing. You really don't need that much water, just lightly spritz it with whatever spray bottle you're using. And voila, looks really cool. You can apply this to furniture pieces. You can apply this to home decor things. So say you have a, um, a vase you're doing, maybe you're doing a, a nice um, plaque and you wanna put some lettering on it and you kind of want that you know, two-toned look, but the nice, you know, easy transition. You can do this to canvas boards if you wanted to. So I do that to canvas boards too, even with acrylic paints. But I actually like using the chalk paints being water-based. I find it's actually even easier to use. So I hope this helps and looking forward to sharing part three, three, another way you can do an ombre. We'll see you soon.